All right, so uh, we'll start on page 17, but first our look at the calendar. We have so far seen three apportionment methods. Hamilton's, where we looked at the residues and just gave out the remaining seats in order of who had the most residue, the most surplus. Jefferson's and Adams, where we would just uh, modify the divisor until we got exactly the right number of seats when we either round it down for Jefferson or up for Adams. Today we talk about our final two methods of apportionment. Webster's is one, Huntington Hills is quite similar, and that's the last one. Just uh, another reminder, project number two was officially assigned last class. You will find it up on Moodle. And uh, again, just because I know that some people, I'm sure, have anxiety about this particular project because it has to do with Excel and computers, that I want to point out one more time that there are resources that you will want to take advantage of on our Moodle page. So if you scroll down just a little bit, you'll find a, um, I don't know what to call it here, a box with project materials. And there are three videos here. You can click on any of them and you will see either Caitlin or myself using Excel live, like clicking the different cells and typing formulas in, and you'll hear our voices. And um, if you actually go into the uh, Project 2 materials folder, then you will find a collection of um, Excel documents, some of which are blank and some of which are already filled in. And so I've opened up just a couple of these right here. So um, here's a document that's available on Moodle. It is a Word document where uh, Caitlin typed in the commands. Hey, when you're writing a formula, you start with an equals. And in particular, if you wanted to find the sum, you just type in sum like we've got right there. And in this particular cell in this example, you type in the sum of B2 colon E2. And what that does is it adds the cells from B2 over to E2 and you hit enter and it just spits out the calculation, the final answer, okay? So even if you know nothing about using Excel to program in formulas, there are step-by-step -step directions, but you gotta make sure you open the right document. If you go into Moodle and you say, okay, I'm only gonna open this document right here, the one that says this document is the project, then you are missing a lot of the explanation stuff that you might want, okay? Um, and the other document I opened is this one. And this is uh, not a Word document with uh, screenshots of Excel, but this is just Excel and it's already filled in. And so for example, in that uh, cell right there, uh, it's gonna be hard to read in the back, but up here is a formula. And this is, this is exactly what Caitlin typed in to create this. And so on your project, you're gonna type in things just like that. You should have questions about those two dollar signs. You'll need to get those questions answered by me or somebody in the studio or by looking at this Word document over here where it explains the idea of using dollar signs in when you're programming Excel, all right? So again, it's not meant to be intimidating or overwhelming. As long as you use the resources, you should go, uh, you should be able to go from knowing nothing about Excel to being able to use Excel to do this project. But you gotta use the resources. Yeah. How was the video? Any other questions or comments on the project? All right, so we're coming back here to the top of page 17 with our fourth of five methods. The first one here is uh, Webster's method. Uh, I'm not gonna read the process. All I will say is that uh, when it comes to rounding here, we're going to round the conventional way, finally. So far we've rounded everything up, we've rounded everything down, now we're going to round in the normal way, which means what's the middle number that decides whether you go up or down is 0.5, right? And if it's 0.5 or higher, you go up. Less than 0.5, you go down. And that's it. So let's try Webster's method here with our favorite numbers. So again, we've got our six states, A through F. The standard divisor was 50,000. We took each of these populations up here and divided by 50,000 to get the 3292 and change. So we've done this a bunch of times already. And so now what we're gonna do is something we have not done before, and that's to write down the rounded quota. Not round everything up, not round everything down, but just round, normal. So 32.92, by virtue of having a 0.9, which way does that get rounded? Up, so that goes up to 33, okay? So this is normal rounding. 138.7, that seven tells me we go up, 139. 3.08, that zero tells me we go down. So that 3.08 goes down to three, we get it? Normal rounding. 
Okay, next one. Up or down? That one goes up to 42. Next one, up or down? Up to 14. Last one, up or down? Up to 20. Okay, and then we total them. And we cross our fingers. What are we hoping for? 250. If it's perfectly 250, we're done. We've got our answer. It's, it's, it's not. All right, Zeke says 251. Can somebody confirm that? Just make sure. Yep, thank you, Sarah. Okay, so now we're going to fill in this next step over here. This 251 is the total, and so we're going to write stuff just like we wrote last time. This total, T, 251, is too big because we wanted 250. So make D bigger. Right, so they just go in the same direction. The total is too big, you make the divisor bigger. So at the moment, our divisor is 50,000. We need to make it bigger. What, what should we? 5,500 is a perfectly good number to try. 51,000 would be a perfectly good number to try. Honestly, I don't know if one of them works or both or either. So we just kind of play this game and we, we keep playing until we get it right. So let's try the uh, 50,500. Now I think, do we already have these numbers from something? Like could Maybe from last class, did we do 5,500 on these? So if you can find them, we can just read them off, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 32 point, as soon as you say five, that's enough information. As soon as you say four, that's enough information. So you don't even need the hundredths place, just the tenths. Yeah. Do you have some? Do you have any numbers for us? Okay. All right. So let's pause and try this. This is something different, though. Even if we've seen these purple numbers before, what we are doing at this stage is different than what we did last time. Right, because last time we rounded everything up or maybe everything down. This is traditional rounding. So, traditional rounding is 32.5, up or down? Up 0.5 or higher goes up. Less than 0.5 goes down, so that goes up to 33. And then you round all those purple numbers according to normal rounding rules. All right, so I'll just read off my row. It's 33, 137, 3, 41, 14, and 20. What did you get for the total, Tony? 248. Okay. We were hoping for 250. We got 248. So we play the game. T is what? Too small. So make the... Smaller. Okay, so 5,500 didn't work. So that means we got to try something smaller than that, like 5,250. But definitely don't go to 51,000. That's going to be worse than what we have right now, right? So we'll try 5,250. And I'm really hoping that it works because I don't have any more rows left in my table. 50,250. Okay, so do all those divisions, and then we'll get the numbers up. Okay, so wherever you are in your calculations, just finish your row by copying these black numbers. We don't need to add them up, but we do need to do what with them? Round them. Round them normally. So we round normally. 33, 138, 3, 42, 14, and 20. Unfortunately, we get 250, which is exactly what we wanted, which means those blue numbers are our final 
apportionment. Questions on that? So what's the only new thing for Webster's method? Is you round normal. Okay, here's a little shortcut, uh, maybe not a shortcut, but a mnemonic device. Remember, we're, we're trying to keep track of like all these different methods, right? So uh, let's go back to our syllabus calendar here. There we go. So uh, Hamilton's, remember, was the leftovers, right? We had residues and we go leftover. Which way do we round for Jefferson's? Down, you can kind of imagine the J looking sort of like a down arrow. Uh, which way do we round for Adams? Up, kind of looks like an up arrow. The W, which way is it pointing? If you kind of imagine it as an arrow. Uh, isn't it going up and down, right? There's like a downward arrow part and an up arrow part. Perfect, that's how normal rounding works. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down, okay? So you see that W and it's telling you sometimes up, sometimes down, normal rounding. Okay, so let's do a tiny bit of history here. Uh, okay, uh, number three, we'll go to uh, Megan. Okay, Christopher, four. Okay, let's pause there. So a lot of things happened in 1941 with this whole apportionment stuff. And so when we look at uh, the maps of the U.S., which tell us that Massachusetts has 11 votes and California has 55 when it comes to the Electoral College and electing a president, uh, those, uh, the 11 votes that we have, okay, we said that two of them were our senators, but the nine that we have, which is based on our population, is, uh, was calculated using this method, which we haven't seen yet but it's Huntington Hill and we're about to talk about it. Um, and uh, not only is this uh, still the current method that we use that was adopted back in 41, um, but that uh, if the population changes in such a way that one seat, uh, that a state gains a seat or loses a seat, it just happens automatically. Congress doesn't need to approve these changes. It's just whatever the formula gives us every census, that's what we have in terms of the number of votes. And I think that Massachusetts actually lost a vote after the 2010 census turned out our population got small enough that when we did this new calculation uh we ended up going down one and other states went up one um but it just happens automatically and congress doesn't need to get involved and uh christopher i think had asked me uh um, during the activities part of a previous class how come the number of uh um, representatives in the house of representatives doesn't increase because the u.s population is always increasing and it's because in 1941 congress uh, voted in this act that just says it is 435 no matter how many people live in the u.s it's just fixed at 435 all right so um it's true that the method has stood the test of time so far. Here we are, you know, 70 plus years later, but it is constantly being challenged by states that lose a seat, like Massachusetts in the last census. Uh, federal courts, including the Supreme Court, have consistently upheld this new method called Huntington Hill. So let's see uh, what the Huntington Hill method is. So first we need a small mathematical detour. Uh, into this this idea of averaging. So can we go to Sarah for this first paragraph here? Okay, so we've got uh, the standard mean, like if you just want to find the average of two numbers, probably you're going to add them and divide by two. But that's only one way to think about average, and it's called the arithmetic mean. And what we're going to be using here is something called the geometric mean. And so you have your two numbers, and it turns out the formula for this thing called the geometric mean doesn't say add the two numbers and divide by two. Rather, it says multiply the two numbers and then take their what? Square root. So, for example, 
let's jump down to number six here. It says find the arithmetic and geometric means of the numbers two and eight. So the arithmetic mean is this formula highlighted in yellow. So what do we do with two and eight according to yellow? Add and divide by two. So we go two plus eight divided by two, which is 10 over two, which is five. Super. Five is the number that's halfway in the middle of two and eight. So far, so good. Now we're going to look at this new thing called the geometric mean. And that means we're using our blue highlighted formula for the geometric mean, which says we're supposed to take the square root of what? Two times eight. We don't add them, we multiply them. And then we take their square root. And the square root of 16 is four. Wonderful. Four is called the geometric mean of two and eight. It's not halfway between, but it, it's in between, right? It's somewhere in between. And it turns out that the geometric mean is what we're going to need to use for our calculations here. Let's do one more. It's another average. Uh, let's take a look at the numbers that we did, uh, that we got for the um, arithmetic mean. Uh, we had two and eight, and what was the arithmetic mean? Five. And there's a really nice pattern here that will take you from two to five and likewise take you from five to eight. What's the pattern? Plus three, yes? Just plus three, it's a consistent plus three, and that's sort of further evidence that five is perfectly in the middle. It's just halfway between. Okay, now let's take a look at our geometric mean. So it's still the numbers two and eight, but what's the geometric mean? Four, and there's just a different, but likewise nice way that we can get from two to four that will also get us from four to eight. And it's multiplying, in this case, by two. Times two, times two. It's just a different way of saying, okay, there's a magic number in between that will consistently get us from two to that middle number to the end. In the arithmetic mean, it's a plus, the same thing. In the geometric mean, it's a times, same thing. Okay, so let's try uh, down here number seven. It says find the arithmetic, but let's just find the geometric mean of 11 and 4. So go ahead and write in the formula, and then if you have a calculator, we'll use it on this one. Say 3 point something? All right, 3.8 3 sounds too small to me. So we multiply 4 and 11, gives 44. And then we want the square root of 44, which is around 6.6. Good enough. That's it, just 6.6. Okay, so we now know how to find the geometric mean of any two numbers. It's not so hard. So here's the idea of this new method called Huntington Hill. Uh, we're going to go up here to Tony for number 9. Okay, so here's the idea. Huntington Hill, this new method that we're about to do, it uses a rounding idea. So we've got all these numbers, just like we had on the previous page. And uh, here, look at the purple numbers for just a second. 32.5, which way do we round it? Up, because the 0.5 says go up. Uh, uh, 41.4, which way do we round that? Down, that's the traditional rounding. We're gonna give you a brand new method of rounding that you have never seen. And the only difference here is that the cutoff is not always at the 0.5 mark. The cutoff is actually the geometric mean of the lower quota and the upper quota. So for example, if we had 32.5, we all look at that and we say, oh, just go up. But I'm telling you there's something else we have to calculate for this new Huntington Hill rounding. You look at 32.5, you look at the lower quota, which is 32, you look at the upper quota, which is 33, and we find the geometric mean of these two numbers. So we do 32 times 33 and then the square root. Let's do that right now. 32 times 33 and then the square root. Square root of 32 times 33, which is how much? 
32.49. Great. 32.5, the purple number, is above this blue number, and therefore it goes up. It doesn't go up because of 0.5. It goes up because it's above our geometric mean, which is our new number to dictate whether you round up or down. It is just a new way to think about what's the middle number. Instead of consistently the middle number being 5 to determine whether you round up or down, you round up or down based on a new middle number. And we're going to calculate a bunch of these. So sit tight. I know it's very strange. But let's take a look at uh, part number 10 right here. Uh, we're skipping 9. Let's jump to number 10. So suppose that we have the number 5.48, and we want to decide whether we round that up or down. Now, if you do normal rounding, which way do you go? Yeah. Now, but this is not normal rounding. We have to do work to figure out whether it goes up or down. So uh, normal rounding would just go down to 5. But this funny new Hamilton uh, Huntington Hill rounding, we have to do the square root of what's the lower quota for 5.48? It's 5. And the upper quota is 6. Do you guys see where the 5 and 6 are coming from? Just round down and round up. Those give you the two whole numbers. So this is the square root of 30, which is about 5.4. Seek, what are you doing back there? So it is 5.4. That is our new middle number to decide whether we round up or down. What was it? Uh, added again. Yeah, it's not added. It's times here. Yeah. Okay. 5.4 is your new cutoff to decide whether numbers go up or down. If they're above 5.4, they go up. If they're below 5.4, they go down. Our number is 5.48. Does it go up or down? Oh, that goes up. Because 5.48 is above our new uh, rounding rule number. So even if the modified quota is like below like five, Yes. So it could round up. It just depends on what the actual cutoff rule is. This is our, I said rounding rule. How about we just call this the cutoff? When we do this funny geometric mean, we are defining a new cutoff. The cutoff is not 0.5 anymore. The cutoff is something you have to calculate every time. And if you are above the cutoff, you go up. And if you're below the cutoff, you go down. And because 5.48 is above the cutoff, it goes up. So our so 5.48 goes up. Yes. And you will have to do it in Excel for. Uh, I think uh, I don't know whether or not it says it in the video. It's in the Word document for sure. Okay, let's take a look at 7.49. Normal rounding, let's start with that one. Up to 8 or down to 7? Down to 7. So far, so good, because we know for normal rounding, the magic cutoff is 0.5. What we need to calculate here is the new magic cutoff. And the new magic cutoff involves a square root. 7.49 has two numbers surrounding it. What are they? Seven and eight. That's the square root we need to calculate. So this is about how much? Seven point four eight. So this seven point four eight is our cutoff. And what happens to seven point four nine? Rounds up, just barely, but it rounds up. So seven point four eight goes up to 8. Megan. For the cutoff number, you have to go out far enough so that you can compare it to the number you're given. So sometimes it'll be obvious. Like if, uh, if this guy right here were actually like 7.9, I, I don't need to go very far in this 7.48 to decide that it's above it. You just have to go far enough so you can compare. Okay? So they, they can't be equal. I mean, the 7.48 that we're, it, it goes forever, this 7.48 number. And uh, probably the 7.49 has a few more digits that we haven't written down. I said they can't be equal. I guess they could. But things would have to be really funky for them to be equal. Does it say it? I don't know. Does it can't ever be equal? I have to think about it. Yeah. 
No, the book, no, I, I, I just, uh, it's not something that's obvious to me that they could never be equal, but it is clear to me that things would have to work out like super perfectly for them to actually be equal. All right. So let's, uh, so the process for Huntington Hill is uh, written here, but it, it says exactly the same things we've been doing for the last couple of classes, but we just round according to this new funky rounding. So let's go on to the next page. We'll see our new favorite numbers here. Yeah, so you can see there's more stuff in this table than in any of the other tables because to decide if 3292 goes up or down, I need to do a calculation. And that calculation involves the lower quota and the upper quota. So let's just do it for the first column and then you guys can work in your groups on the rest of this table. So 3292, what's the lower quota? There's 32. What's the upper quota? 33. And then GM, geometric mean, which is the square root of what? 32 times 33, which I think we found before, but we'll just do it again real quick. 32.49. Um, so the bigger the numbers in uh, the square root get, the closer this is to the 0.5, like the, to the arithmetic mean. I don't think it'll ever equal, but if you did like square root of 1,000 times 1,001, you should get something really close to 1,000.5, just under. Okay, so uh, let's do our comparison and then you guys can work on the rest of the table. We are comparing 3292 to our new cutoff. You can see the word cutoff right here. So which way does 3292 go? Goes up because it is bigger than the cutoff. So it goes up to 33. So work with your neighbors. If there's a table with no calculators, then move someplace where there's some calculators because we can't get very far without them on this problem. Okay, so we do our basic rounding. A couple of observations. You need to do the geometric mean for each state. It's not a consistent geometric mean. You really need to look at the purple and, and green numbers for every state and do each geometric mean separately. A real uh, easy place to make a mistake is to forget which number you're comparing to which. You are comparing the standard quota to the um, geometric mean, okay? If you somehow lose your perspective because you're doing a ton of calculations here and you, you compare the wrong way, you're going to round the wrong way. So you're always looking at these guys here and deciding whether they go up or down. Christopher. We absolutely will. Yes. Well, uh, wait a second. Yes. Is this 250? Are these numbers? Are my red numbers right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, back here. Okay, this 251, is it too big or too small? Too big. So what do we do with our divisor? Make D bigger. So for example, you could do 50,500. Now, if you do uh, if you do the calculations again, the question is, do you need to repeat the uh, geometric mean calculations? And the answer is probably not, but maybe. Uh, if this number down here, when we do our modified quota, suppose it becomes 32.7. I'm just making something up. Just making something up. Does 32.7 have the same lower and upper quotas as 32.9 did? Yeah, it's 32 and 33, and so of course we'll get exactly the same cutoff number. But suppose that when we did our new modified thing, this actually became 
what are the upper and lower quotas? It's 33 and 34, which would change. So if you're seeing the same kind of lower and upper quotas, you don't need to do it again. But if somehow one of these numbers changes by enough to get it to the next, then you got to do it. Okay, so give it a shot. And um, once you've found something that works, uh, go ahead and move on to the next page where there's some more tables for you to fill in. I'm here on the bottom of page 20 where you've just finished doing one Huntington Hill and then one Webster's for the same exact um, towns or states. So the apportionments that we got for uh, Huntington Hill above and Webster's down below were different. In fact, quite different. If you just like look at the different states and how they did, several of them changed. And so why did that happen? Well, because a lot of the quotas that we found in the very beginning were really close to 0.5. Right, didn't we have a couple of them that were like 0.48 something? Really, really close to 0.5. Now, normally, things aren't going to change. So I'm just going to make up some numbers here. Suppose that, um, that our standard quota is uh, 34.1. If you round 34.1 normally, which way do we go? We go down. If you round 34.1 according to Huntington Hill, which way do you think it's going to go? Huntington Hill is probably going to give you like 34.49 as like the new cutoff. It's still going to go down. And so most of the time, Huntington Hill and Webster's will give you exactly the same thing. It's only because we had some numbers that were really close to the 0.48s and 49s that we got something different. So in general, do we think Huntington Hill's uh, method versus Webster's are more often the same or different? It's going to be the same almost every time. These numbers were chosen very specifically to give you something different. Um, and so why do we do this more complicated way than Webster's way? Well, this is what a group of mathematicians, they were, they were given some money by the government to find the, quote, correct way. And I, this is just me riffing here, but I suspect that they thought Webster's was perfectly fine, but were paid to come up with something new, and so they came up with this other thing that was way complicated and gives you basically the same thing that Webster's gives you. I know what to say. But that's what we do, is this Huntington Hill really complicated way. Okay, keep on trucking with the activity.